all right welcome back to part two uh, I'm in open SCAD now and uh, the purpose of this particular module is going to be we're going to try and repeat um, Eratosthenes experiment well not experiment actually we're just going to repeat his procedure and we're going to figure out the radius of the earth but at the same time we're going to realize uh, that the concepts that he used and the principles that he uses are extremely significant for astro navigation and uh, if you understand this part the rest of it should be easy so uh, let's start okay so this is open SCAD and this is a 3d model of the earth that I've made okay so uh, you can see there's a little hole in it over here um, right here there's a hole okay now the way the story works is that the way the story works is so Eratosthenes knew the earth was curved he knew it was a sphere right like this but he wanted to figure out what the radius was all right so now I'm I'm gonna you know twist the story a little bit uh, to suit my purposes so if you want to look that up I suggest you look it up on Wikipedia it's an amazing story of science uh, but uh, I'll just use the parts of it that are necessary for me okay so what Eratosthenes did is he had a well a water well so this is just a like you know you can see this is a this is a hole in the earth that's what a water well is right so what he did is he had this well right and so now let me show you a cutaway section of the earth uh, just by editing my open SCAD code all right so that's the earth now cut away and you're actually looking through and that's the water well okay and that obviously a water well points towards the center of the earth right you you know you wouldn't have a well that's dug into the earth in this direction um, a well would point towards the center of the earth because you cut them vertically downwards right okay now what Eratosthenes did is he knew the earth was a sphere all right but he wanted to calculate the radius okay so he wanted to calculate this distance from the center of the earth to the earth's surface he wanted this radius r all right and this is how he did that okay so let me show you something else here which is He waited for a particular day of the year, okay? He waited for a particular day of the year when the sun was directly overhead this well, right? So this is the ray of light coming from the sun, okay? This is the ray of light coming from infinity, from the sun, okay? The sun is actually sending a whole lot of parallel rays towards the earth, okay? But this one ray, this, this, this one yellow ray that you see, now that's actually going straight into the well, right? And you can see the reflection of the sun over here. So when Eratosthenes saw this point, so let me show you this again. When, let's turn that a little bit. So when Eratosthenes, that's the reflection of the sun. Right? So when he saw that dead center in his well, in the center of the well, he knew that the sun was perfectly above this point on earth. So he knew that this angle was 90 degrees. So this is, now this is where the 3D and the 2D become a little difficult to understand, but he knew that this angle was 90 degrees. Wherever you looked, this angle was 90 degrees just for this one ray of light going into the well okay and that's why if you if I turn this around slightly and now show you the side view you can see that right if this was Eratosthenes local horizon right so the part of the earth that looked flat to him this angle would be exactly 90 degrees now what he did he sent a student of his right all the way over here sent him over to a place okay somewhere else right 
and asked this person that so what he did is Eratosthenes waited for the sun okay as the sun moved in the sky he waited until the sun was dead overhead and he knew that that was in the center of the well and then he sent a smoke signal okay so he sent a signal by smoke like this which this student of his recognized right and this guy's job was this student this guy this student his job was at that very moment when Eratosthenes sent him the smoke signal right so at the same moment that the sun was dead ahead a dead above Eratosthenes right so there's the sun right here sun is over here somewhere right so it's right above Eratosthenes and Eratosthenes knew that by the reflection of the well in the well sends the smoke signal at that very moment this student was told now you measure the angle of the sun all right so let's see how that happened so let me just come back here to my open get and let's just let us get show the what the student was seeing okay so let's render that all right here we are again now these are now all the rays of light coming from the sun obviously there's rays of light coming everywhere right so there's there's you know there's rays of light coming like this like this all over this globe okay some of them are just going past the globe also you know they're not even hitting the globe they're just going straight past the globe but I'm just showing you only in this one plane of the earth just this one plane okay that's all that's of importance to us all right so let's turn this a little bit um, okay now here comes the geometry right? it's simple geometry but it's monumental geometry right so okay so this is Eratosthenes local horizon right he sees the Sun at 90 degrees okay but because the earth is curved thus the observer over here does not see the Sun at 90 degrees you look here this is overhead for this observer over here so if the student is standing here like this this is right ahead for him and now if he puts a stick over here he'll get uh, let's say he put a stick over here he would get the shadow of the Sun because the Sun is now reaching him at an angle you can see that okay now what you need to see is that here it's 90 okay here it's a little less than 90 here it's a little less than 90 less than that and then less than that until at some point there'll be some ray of light which come which is coming from the Sun and so as this person moves further and further away he'll observe the Sun because his local horizon is changing you see this is the local vertical for him see this because the earth is curved the earth is a sphere so each person depending on where you are will observe the Sun at a different angle right let me show you that again so this observer here right if this is the vertical for that observer he observes the Sun at this angle and this angle so supposing we call this a right and Eratosthenes angle that's what he observes is let's say B and we know B is equal to 90 right because it's right ahead it's directly above him and it's its reflection is dead center in the well okay which means that if you draw a line from the Sun okay go all the way through its reflection and go down to the center of the earth it will eventually touch the center of the earth that's what it means to have something directly overhead you so I want you to stop for a minute and just think about what that means wherever you are on the world in on the earth right if something is directly above you overhead you if you draw a line between your position which is here and that object that line should go all the way to the center of the earth right if that object is not directly above you so for instance this observer here right the Sun is not directly above it's at some angle which is a which he calculated by you know using the shadow and the stick method whatever that angle is but if you draw a line now between this guy's point and where he thinks the sunlight is coming from you notice that it doesn't go through the center of the earth okay let me show you again wherever you are on the earth so let's say you're here you have an object directly above you overhead if you join that object with your position which is here it will go through the center of the earth because the earth is a sphere that's simple geometry okay all right so now we have this angle which is 90 degrees 
All right, and here comes the genius part now. This is Eratosthenes genius, right? And this is the observer, right? And he measures this angle from the vertical, and it turns out to be this, right? Now, Eratosthenes said, let's draw a line between the center of the earth, okay, and this observer's position. So, draw a line here, and then draw a line between the point where the sun is directly overhead. So, this is the point on the earth's surface where the sun is directly overhead, okay. So, draw a line that joins these two, all right. Eratosthenes said, this angle, right, measured at the center of the earth is equal to this angle. Now you can see that, that's, that's just simple geometry. If these two lines are parallel, if this line is parallel to this line, okay, and this is just one line going through this point on earth. Remember, this line is parallel to this line, okay. Let me show that again. This is this is critical, so pay close attention to this. Right? So here's the observer. Join him to the center of the earth. Uh, right? And this is the point on the earth where the sun is directly overhead. So join this to the center of the earth. If this is a, indeed a perfect circle, right? So in astro navigation, we just assume the earth is a perfect circle. It's not an, a perfect sphere. It's not really, but we just assume it is. So you know, the, the differences because of the oblate spheroid and things like that are minimal. So we just assume it's a sphere. Eratosthenes said, this angle has got to be equal to this angle. That's just simple geometry. Think about it. This is just one line, right? These two lines are parallel to each other. This is parallel to this, obviously, because they're coming from infinity, right? That's what we discussed earlier. So these two lines are parallel then this angle has got to be equal to this angle, right? Now, Eratosthenes now knew how far he sent this guy, right? So let's say he sent him, I'm not going to go into the specifics, but let's say he sent him a distance of, I don't know, let's say X miles, right? And told him, go X miles away from this well and observe the sun when I tell you to, okay? Now let's just let's just complete the triangle so that we understand, right? And now by observing this angle, whatever this angle was, angle A, Eratosthenes knew this angle because these two are the same, right? So Eratosthenes knew that an angle of A corresponds corresponds to x miles on the Earth's surface. You see that? X miles on the Earth's surface corresponds to this angle A. So then all he had to do was ask himself, well, there's 360 degrees in the circle, right? So if A angle, A degrees, corresponds to X miles, how much does 360 degrees correspond to? Right? So that's just 360 into X divided by A. And if you do that, you get the circumference of the Earth. Because... 360 degrees, if you went around like this, 360 degrees, you'd be going around the entire Earth once. Let me show that again. This is important. An angle A, right, if it corresponds to this much on the Earth's surface, and you know that this is also angle A by geometry, right, all you got to do to find out, so this is X, right, so all you got to do to find out this entire distance Right? is just do some simple uh, proportional mathematics. So, 360 degrees. This angle x, sorry, this distance x on the Earth's surface, we say, in technical terms, subtends an angle A at the Earth's center. This distance x subtends some angle at the Earth's center, which we call A. All right. So, if you want to know how much the entire Earth is, right? You just do some proportional maths. This whole thing is 360 degrees. A is some fraction of that, right? Which corresponds to this distance x. So, all you got to do, if you want to find out the circumference of the Earth, is equal to 360 multiplied by x divided by
That's it. And then you have the circumference of the earth. And if you have the circumference of the earth, you can then calculate the radius of the earth because you know that the circumference is just equal to 2 pi r. So if you find the circumference, you can find the radius. And so that's how Eratosthenes calculated the radius of the earth and its circumference. Or rather, the first he did the circumference, and from there he inferred the radius of the earth. Now just think about that. This is 2,400 years ago. 2,400 years ago, right? He used a water well, a stick with a shadow, and a signaling device, like a smoke signal. That's it. That's all he used. And of course, he used his brain. All right, And he was able to figure out the circumference of the earth. And consequently, also the radius of the earth. You want to know how accurate he was? He was off by about 75 kilometers. That's it. That's how much he was in error. Just think about that. All right, Think about the significance of that. Using simple geometry and simple understandings of how the world works, he was able to calculate the circumference of the earth to an accuracy of 75 kilometers. You tell me that's genius or not. Anyway, so that's the Eratosthenes experiment. But for us, the takeaway is, and this is important, so forget about Eratosthenes for now. The takeaway for us is, if you have a celestial object like a star or the sun, and there's some point on the earth's surface where that object is directly overhead, right? Think about that again. I'll say that again. You have a star or you have a sun, whatever it is, that's infinitely far away, so the rays of light are coming parallel, right? There will be some point on the Earth's surface where that object is directly overhead, right? We're going to call that the geographical position of that object. That makes sense. Wherever the light from that object hits the surface of the Earth at 90 degrees, or in other words, goes through the center of the Earth from that point, you could just call that the geographical position. Obviously, it's a position on the geography of the Earth, so it's the geographical position. So keep that in mind, right? And as you move further and further away from that point, okay, you'll find that the angle you observe is no longer overhead. The further you go, the greater the angle. The further you move away from this point, the greater the angle is going to become from the vertical. If you measure angles from the vertical, the greater it's going to become. Right? So that's the principle that we need to remember from Eratosthenes' uh, scientific uh, discovery of the, the radius and the size of the Earth. Okay? And uh, now that we know this, I would encourage you to go through this video again uh, if you haven't quite understood, because this is the core principles uh, of astronavigation. Um, the fact that it's not so much about numbers and you know things like that, it's just about angles. It's about angles at the center of the Earth. This is the core principle you need to understand. Once you understand the fact that everything in astronavigation is about angles at the center of the Earth, we may be measuring the angles over here at the surface of the Earth, right? The observer might obviously is at the surface of the Earth and he's measuring angles with his sextant or whatever other tool he has. But when you think about it, what we're talking about is actually the angles measured at the center of the Earth. Now that's the important thing. And the fact that you can convert this measured angle into some distance on a sphere. Right? Once you get that, and once that principle is understood, uh, you should be able to move along with astronomy without any problem at all. So I want you to watch this video again if you've understood. And if you haven't, uh, just go through it again, go through it slowly, try to do these diagrams on pieces of paper, and you'll eventually figure out that the geometry I'm telling you is, is indeed correct. And um, I would advise you, to, before you go further in this lecture series, make sure you understand until this point um, absolutely perfectly. Right. So. That is uh, Eratosthenes, and uh, again, this is OpenSCAD, and these files will be available. So, if you want to play around with them, download them, and play around with them, please do that. I'm sure that'll um, you know help your understanding of uh, of how I'm 
um, arriving at things. All right, thank you. I'll see you in the next video.